We're now ready for our real titration. Before I start, I'm just going to do a quick scan of my bench to make sure that everything is safe and secure, particularly my pipette. During my titration, my attention is going to be focused around here, so I don't want to worry about the rest of my bench. You'll also notice that I've kept my original flasks. I keep my old flasks, and I always keep my old flasks, and I don't wash them out. I keep my old flasks because I want to compare my next color to my other colors. So the last titration I did, which was a rough titration, ended up with this color. If I just took this up to someone, they could probably tell me it's peachy, but I'm actually not too sure myself if it's a little bit on the pink side. So I'm keeping it there. And when I'm doing my titration, I'm gonna look for a new color, a new color, a new shade that might be better than that. The reason for doing the rough titration was also so I could get an estimate of how much volume I needed for my burette. Remember, we don't want to waste time adding one drop at a time. We want to get through our titrations as quick as we can while not compromising on the quality. Since I am comparing my colors, I am also going to use a, another white card just to place my other flasks on top because I want to get a good and accurate comparison. Before I start, remember, I'm gonna check my burette to make sure that everything is nice and dry, that there's nothing dripping. Remember, I'm using a card with a black line so I can read the meniscus. This time, it's a real titration. I make a note of that to myself. Okay flask underneath, card underneath, and now that I know how much I need, I'm just gonna place my thumb for the rough tighter volume. And I'm just gonna go about one or one and a half to two mils less than um, the rough titration's tighter volume, because then I'm just gonna let that run. I'm going to let that drain. I'm not going to waste time getting single drops from that. Oh wow, look at that. It actually looks pinkish, but if I swirl it, you'll find that it goes back to yellow because I'm not actually there yet. Okay, I'm also going to go ahead and just do a little wash down. Now at this point, I know that if I go any further, I might actually end up being quite close. I'm going to go for just a few drops at a time. I'm going for three drops at a time and what I'm going to do is actually pay attention, pay very special attention to how long it takes for, those, um, for that pink color change to dissolve or disappear back to yellow. It's taking a lot longer. I still have a drop hanging off the end of my burette. So at this point I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should start adding just a single drop at a time. I've got a half a drop hanging off, so what I want to do is just touch that to the clean surface on the side of a conical flask, and then I'm going to rinse that down. Okay, looks like that half drop wasn't enough to turn that on the peachy side. Let's just go ahead and add one more drop. I want to be careful. To add a single drop, what I do is I turn the stopcock, and when this vertical, ha when these handles get closer and closer to the vertical position, that's when I want to slow down the turning process because that's how I get single drops hanging off at the end. When that drop forms at the end of the burette, then I'm going to turn my burette to the off position very quickly. And that will give me a single drop. If I then repeat the process, I can get that single drop to fall. Now this takes some practice, so I hope that none of you guys watching at home have been um, skipping out on classes. Going for, oh, that pink takes a long time. Still got a drop hanging off. Touch that to the side. Wash it down. Anything. And it's still yellow. Let's go ahead and add a drop. I don't want to get too impatient. This is the part which matters. This is what decides whether you get achieved merit or excellence. For NCEA anyway. 
So I'm paying attention to how long the pink takes to disappear. Ooh, okay. Now at this point, from the swirling I've still got chemicals hanging off on the walls. I still have a single drop hanging off the end of my burette, so I want to touch that to the tip. And then I'm going to wash everything down. I'm also going to swirl it, and I'm going to swirl it for 10 seconds to make sure the colour stays. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That is our end point, and I know it's my end point because I've got these two flasks to compare it to. I've got my original yellow. That's what it would look like. That's the shade it should be if I hadn't finished. This is the shade for my rough titration. That's the shade it turns to when I get a little too much onto the pink side. At this point in time, I need to make sure I write down the title volume down. One of the common mistakes we get is uh, people move the flask off to the side, they prepare their next flask, and then they start the next titration without recording the volumes down. So we're going to go ahead and record that. Uh, I need my card with my black line. Excellent. Now, because this is the colour I want, what I will actually do is make sure I keep this flask. I'm going to keep this flask as the colour I want, and I'm also going to keep this other flask as the colour I get when I've gone too much. So essentially, what I'm doing is I'm saving uh, the colours which I'm looking for. I don't actually need this yellow anymore, okay? Because as I'm doing this titration, what I'm looking for is a shade closer to this one, and when I've got this much, then I know I've gone too far. So now I can um, wash out this flask and use it again.